a setup photo mechanic. First things first, you want to download photo mechanic online. Google it. Should take you to camera bits. Go to camera bits. You want to go to try. Scroll down. You'll see the Mac and Windows version. So download that, unpack it, and install it on your machine. You're just going to use the trial version. It's a 30-day trial. If you want to buy it outright, I believe for students it's $60. I think you have to actually email them from an EKU address to get that $60 discount because they have to verify that you're a student. Um, coincidentally, also, if you can't afford it and your 30-day trial version runs out, you can email Photo Mechanic from your EKU address and ask for an extension on the trial period. And they said they would uh, honor those for a little while. Um, okay, once you've gotten it installed, go ahead and open it up and you should see something like this. How Photo Mechanic works basically is this is a representative of all the stuff on your computer and you can get to folders and things like that, um, just, just like a little server. But the main thing you want to do, well, at the outset is you want to set up Photo Mechanic so that when, excuse me, whenever you stick a card in your computer, it will automatically recognize that you're trying to ingest something and it will try and grab it for you. So the way you do that is go to the preferences under photo mechanic preferences, and you can toggle between your preferences here, but we want general and you want on startup to say open empty contact sheet. And then also over here on mount of camera disc, which means when you stick a memory card in there, you want it to show ingest dialogue. That way it'll automatically load up those cards. When you're done with that, click OK. And let's go ahead and stick a card in here. When I do this, two things will happen. Photo Mechanic will recognize I've stuck a card in and it'll try to ingest them. But so will my computer because this is an Apple computer and it has this thing called Apple Photos, and it wants to be super helpful. Well, I can't stand Apple Photos, uh, so I'm not gonna use it. So go through, if you get it, and if you get Apple Photos to come up, you wanna turn it off. The way you do that is first, it has this welcome screen, just go through the welcome screen and say yes. And then when you get to this screen, you wanna uncheck this box where it says open photos for this device. Once you've unchecked this and then quit photos, it won't open for you any longer which is what you want. You want just Photo Mechanic to open. So let's go back to Photo Mechanic. So this is the ingest dialog box. And this is bread and butter. What you have up top, this shows your cards. You might have, if you have a hard drive or a jump drive attached, you'll see those in here too. So you wanna make sure that you're taking the photos from the source, which is your card. Um, going down, we ignore this. Um, oh wait, you know what we wanna do first is over here primary destination. This is where do you want to save these photos on your screen? So just click primary destination and maybe I'll go to my pictures folder and I'm going to make a new folder. Um, and I'll just call it progress photos. That way I can stick, I keep all my progress photos separate. Just click open. So now from now on, whenever I ingest stuff from photo mechanic, it'll automatically stick them in that folder. But that's not a great enough system. I'd like a subfolder within that for each um, time I ingest photos. And you can do that down here. Um, source directory, don't worry about that. Copy photos, this is what we want. We want them to be copied into, I'm gonna go a dated folder only. So every single time I ingest, it'll make a new folder with that date on it, which is, that's pretty good because that'll chronologically keep everything organized. So I went ahead and changed that to into dated folder. Um, but that's not enough. Let's not stop there. We can also, I want to rename every photo that comes in to my specifications. And the way you do that is as follows. Just check this box and then we're going to add, what do you want to name each photo as it comes in? Well, ideally what I want is it to take the date, to take the name of the photo, take my name and stick it all in there. And I want it to do it automatically so I don't have to write all this stuff. And that's what photo mechanic uh, is really good at. And the way you do that is um, get a cursor going right here and then go down to here where it says variables. Um, just go ahead and click that and it will open up this box over here. 
And now we can tell it to grab various variables and it will stick it right here um, in our name. So for instance, we want the date. <clears throat> and the way you can get that is as follows. Um, I'm scrolling down a little bit and you'll notice there's a bunch of stuff up here that's sort of pretty wonky. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Take it down to time. And in here is what we want. So I'm gonna scroll down until I get to year. I want a two digit year. So it'd just be like 15 for 2015. So what do you do here is you double click and then you'll see it sticks that variable over here and it will automatically grab the year from that camera. So we have to make sure our cameras are accurate and up to date on their internal clocks. Next, I want the month. So I'm gonna scroll up, go up to month. And we don't just want any month, we want month with a zero. That way, if it is in fact like September, it'll go zero nine rather than just nine. So I double click that and now we have month. And then I'm gonna do the same exact thing for day. And again, I'm gonna get the one with the zero. So I get that zero if in fact it's just one, one digit. Cool, so this will automatically imprint now, you know, 15 month, September, so it'd be zero nine and then the day, whatever that day would be. Uh, I'm gonna separate it with a hyphen next. Um, so I added a hyphen there. I'm gonna grab what's called the object name, which is also called the slug. And there's a variable for that. So I'm back over here in this variables box and I'm gonna scroll up until, whoops, switched programs on you there. So until I get to object, which is right here. So I'm gonna double click object and now you see objects down here. Add another hyphen and now I want my name, which is gonna be the photographer name, which you can see right here, photographer. So double click that. And last but not least, I want a number on the end. And that's called the sequence. So there's no variable for it over here, but there is right here. You just click on sequence and you'll see it adds it to the end there. But we don't just want it to, that number may change. So you wanna click right here where it says sequence variable. So it knows where to begin the sequence. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And you can see here, you want it to be like 0001. So it'll start your first photo with that. And that's good, just click okay. Cool, so now every single photo is gonna get this unique identifier, and then it's also gonna se sequentially number them. Good, um, cool, I think we're almost set, but not quite yet. Well, we don't know what's the object name and what's the photographer name, how is it gonna know these things? It draws all that from this, which is called the IPTC stationary pad. And what this does is it attaches basically a file to every, to every photo. Um, a unique file to each photo, which is really nice. So what you wanna do is first check this. So we say apply IPTC stationary, and then click on this button to open it up. And you'll see this is what you get. It's just this big empty field. So what we wanna do is check the things that we want to include in the stationary pad. So for instance, description, caption, super important. So we check here. This is gonna be a general description of the photo. Later, you'll come back and add names for specific photos, but for now, just include a general description of what it is you shot. Let's say we did a, a photo session on um, an SGA meeting and they were discussing parking. So I'd say SGA meeting in Powell on September, I don't know, 9th, 2015, where they discussed parking problems on campus. You wanna give this general description for a couple of reasons. One is, so we know the context of these photos. So like a year or two later, we need to come back and find a photo that dealt with some particular thing. We can at least have some idea what was going on in these photos. Next, um, we don't need description. We don't need a headline. We do need keywords. Again, these are just things that'll help us um, search later on. So I check that and then I'm gonna go add SGA. I might do 2015. Parking, meeting, simple as that. Next, I'm gonna scroll down, 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 until I get down here, image rights, creator, photographer. This is gonna be your name. Job title, we don't need that. Copyright, if you wanna add copyright, you might do 2015, and you could do your name again. Um, credit, likewise. It depends, some people this is your name, but you might be working for somebody, in which case you might have to credit, say Time Magazine or something like that. 
Um, copyright URL, if you had a website, you could link to that. Um, okay, now I'm down here. This is the ever important object. So you need to check this. This is the slug, the unique identifier for that particular story. So maybe this one's called SGA meeting. A um, couple things here. First, notice I don't put spaces or anything. This needs to be one word. So if you do have to use two words like I do here just to give it some context, I just what's called camel case it. Um, you could also use a hyphen here or something like that, but uh, I, I just do it this way. But it needs to be one word, and you have to put this. Make sure you change this for each story because this is really important. This is what identifies that particular story. Um, okay, there's nothing else. If you scroll down, none of these things we really need. I mean, I guess if you wanted to fill in all this sort of business, you could, but this seems overkill. Back up top, there's also these dates and um, locations and things like that. Uh, you're welcome to pop those in. You might just click date so that it puts the capture time on each photo. Um, and that's it. That's it for the IPT stationery. Now, we could click close here, but don't do it yet. In, in fact, once you've done this once, you want to set it up so you've saved this template. And you save templates in Photo Mechanic with the lightning bolt, which you'll see right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click the lightning bolt and click save. And then I'm going to give this one a name. So I'm calling it um, demonstration for screencast. Cool. And now it's there. And once you've saved it like that, you can find your names of them. So if you ever want to load one up, just click the lightning bolt and you can choose which one you want to load. For instance, I saved one a long time ago and you can see it changes or I want to go back to this one. That's another one I saved, but this is the one I'm doing right now. Cool. Once you're done, just click close stationary. Now, when you ingest your photos, which I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go down over here, click ingest. It's going to take all these photos give them all this name. It's going to apply the IPTC stationary pad, and then it's going to stick them all in that progress photos inside a subfolder. Now I just accidentally typed something there. So I'm going to go ahead and click ingest and you'll see photo mechanic work its magic. And you can see I got my four photos that I downloaded and they all show up in a folder. I go to pictures, progress photos, and you can see it created this folder right here with the date. And that's what we're in right now. Cool. Uh, now, I'll show you how to gonna use um, Photo Mechanic uh, in the next video.